Yo! What's up everyone, Bytor here. A very quick announcement before we jump into the content. Plenty of you have asked us to release questions in a written form to practice for your interviews. Due to the high volume of messages we have received asking for this and our limited time to respond, we have decided to start releasing these questions on a weekly basis. We created a Patreon where we will be releasing questions so you can prepare for your interviews at your own pace. The link should pop in your screens right about now. There will also be a link in the video description below. All right, let's jump into today's question. We had posted this question in both Reddit and our community page. If it got a little confusing, don't worry, you are not alone. Let me give you some background here. This question was asked to an analog design engineer with over four years of experience. Let's jump into character now. The interviewer will show you the circuit and say the following. Assume all devices are ideal and have the same threshold voltage. Can you find all the intermediate voltages? We can see a mix of both NMOS and PMOS devices at different gate potentials. What question would you ask the interviewer before attempting to answer the question? I will give you 10 seconds to pause the video and think about that. A great question to ask is the following. Can I assume that the intermediate nodes are initially zero? Let's be a bit tough on ourselves and assume the interviewer says the following. No, the intermediate voltages can start at any potential. Well, if that's the case, we can assume there are some capacitance at the nodes with some initial conditions. These initial conditions can be anywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity. We also know that NMOS devices require a VGS greater than a threshold voltage to conduct, while PMOS devices require a VSG greater than the absolute value of the threshold voltage to form a channel. So let's start with the device on the left hand side and let's look at it in isolation. Let's perform a few tests here. If the node labeled VX starts at negative infinity, then clearly the source of this device is at the left hand side, the three volt supply. Current will flow from source to drain, charging this imaginary capacitor until the node reaches three volts. At that moment, the potentials are the same, so there is no more current flow to charge that node. A similar thing happens if we assume node VX starts at zero volts. What happens though, if the node VX starts at positive infinity? The third test assumes that the source of the device is at node VX due to the higher potential. Again, since the current flows from source to drain, that will discharge the imaginary capacitor at node VX until it reaches 3 volts. Therefore, we can say that node VX will settle at 3 volts. Since the gate of the next PMOS device is at 2 volts, and we know that VX will settle at 3 volts, that means there will also be a channel formed on that second PMOS device, since VSG is greater or equal than the threshold voltage. By following the same train of thought as in the previous device, we can conclude that the node labeled VY will also settle at 3 volts. We will leave the proof up to you. Finally, what happens at node VZ? Well, let's perform the same tests as before. If we assume VZ starts at negative infinity, then there is a channel form on these two devices. Current will flow from drain to source, charging that node. At exactly one volt, there is still a channel in both devices. Anything above that will make the left NMOS transistor be in cutoff since the channel is no longer there due to its VGS being less than the threshold voltage. However, it can still act as the source of the rightmost NMOS device. The node will keep climbing up until 3 volts. 
anything above 3 volts will make the NMOS device on the right hand side be in cutoff. What about if the voltage starts at positive infinity? Then the sources of the NMOS devices are here due to their lower potential. Both NMOS devices are clearly in cutoff since their sources are already at a higher potential than their gates. We can confidently say that VZ can be anywhere between 3 volts and infinity, dependent on the initial condition. Remember we assumed ideal devices, so I challenge you to think what would happen under non-ideal assumptions. It is within the realm of possibility to expand this question with non-idealities. And there you have it another solid interview question that you can be fully prepared for. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the content today. Also, make sure to enable the little bell icon to be notified of the raffles for mock interviews. Finally, don't forget that you can start finding questions for interviews starting this week on our Patreon channel. Cheers!